Good day. The state television company of Western Armenia represents all the most important events of these days. Today's broadcast. On the question of the Armenians of Western Armenia, the sons of Western Armenia, Martyros Jamkochian, Washington believes that a lasting peace between Eastern Armenia and Azerbaijan is possible, wind and pale. Eastern Armenia and Azerbaijan reaffirmed their loyalty to the Almaty Declaration that accordingly to each other's territorial integrity. The EU leadership continues to ignore the rights of the people of Artsakh. The reaction of the foreign ministry to the statement of Charles Michel, Azerbaijan is destroying the Armenian spiritual heritage of Artsakh, U.S. State Department. The permanent representative of Armenia to UNESCO is concerned about the threats to the Armenian heritage in the territories controlled by Azerbaijan. Western Armenia Television presents an excerpt from Taliat Pasha's letter on the genocide against Armenians. We wanted to leave an Armenian in the museum. If you read this letter in the future, it will mean that we have lost. But our defeat will not bring you victory. If the executioner fails to behead the victim, it is a defeat for the executioner, but not a victory for the victim. Victory is when the victim's head never falls under the executioner's axe again. For the executioner, every victim is another, and for the victim every executioner can be the last. Do you consider me a hated enemy? Look for your enemy among the living, not among the dead. I was the enemy of your dead grandfathers. Your enemy may be my living grandchildren. Recognize your enemy. Our success is that we can turn an enemy into a friend. Your misfortune is to turn a friend into an enemy. Just because you see the enemy as a friend does not mean he will act that way. This is exactly how your confidence the Red Fathers behaved when they helped us come to power. They thought that the enemy Hamid could be defeated by the friendly young Turk. This is how you have acted for centuries, thinking that the Persians would lose to the Turks and the Turks to the Russians. And because you have based your steps not on cold reasoning but on blind faith, you have always suffered for your naivety. Martyr Jamkochan, a descendant of genocide survivors, was raised as Armenian from childhood. At the age of 12, he became a freedom fighter fighting for the liberation of Armenia. On June 9, 1981, he was assassinated in Geneva by a Turkish secret police officer working against the recognition of the genocide against Armenians and the Armenian question. From 1990, he participated in the Artsakh Liberation War. Jamkochan said in an interview that he was allowed to leave prison once, on the occasion of his birthday. I wanted to be taken to the Armenian church in Geneva for the holy liturgy. I was handcuffed and taken in a large procession to the church, where the leaders of the Armenian Apostolic and Protestant churches were waiting for me at the door. I didn't get out of the car. I asked the policeman to remove any handcuffs. I said that I should be free in the church. The church officials were also upset. Father Garnuzian said, this is our parish. I am in charge release his hands. Two policemen who were present at my arrest many years ago were with me and they said, don't think you will escape. The whole church is surrounded. And they went in with me. As soon as they saw me, the whole church stood up and when the service was over, all this present approached me one by one, shook my hand, some kissed me, others embraced me. Hail my son. The police were surprised. When we came here with your picture at the time of your arrest, they said they did not recognize you. And now? You Armenians are the unsolved mystery. Only now do we understand how united you are. I reply, they didn't really recognize me then, but now they thank the freedom fighter in their own way. After the service, the Armenian Women's Union organized a dinner of Armenian dishes and invited the officer who accompanied me. Commenting on the meeting between the leaders of the Republic of Armenia and Azerbaijan in Brussels, first deputy spokesman of the U.S. State Department, Vendat Patel, said the following. Our main press reported the United States was not involved in these negotiations, but as a follow-up to the talks we hosted in Arlington, we continue to believe that these are important steps forward and that a lasting peace between these two countries is possible. The President of the Council of Europe, Charles Michel, made these remarks after a trilateral meeting with the leaders of the Republic of Armenia and Azerbaijan. The Council of Europe President noted they focused on moving towards the normalization of relations between Armenia and Azerbaijan. The leaders shared the desire to build peace in the South Caucasus. I highly appreciate their joint efforts. We reviewed together all the issues on the agenda. On the border issue, we reviewed the progress and next steps into the border demarcation. In this context, 
context, the leaders agreed to resume bilateral talks on border issues. The leaders confirmed their firm commitment to the 1991 Almaty Declaration and the territorial integrity of the Republic of Armenia and Azerbaijan. The final demarcation of the border will be decided through negotiations. Referring to the above statement, the government of Western Armenia would like to remind once again that the Azerbaijani state did not occupy Artsakh and Nakhijevan, which were part of Western Armenia at the time of its establishment. Speaking of the fact that Mr. Charles Michel may not be aware of our legal case, we would like to draw your attention to the fact that the indigenous Armenian people of Artsakh, which gained its independence within Armenia in 1920 on the basis of the Severed Treaty, had already declared in 1991. It is not possible to play the independence of the Baku authorities and the Almata Declaration. A decisive role in determining the borders between the Armenian state and the Baku authorities must also take into account the decades of massacre in this region, which have changed the demographic structure of the region. We urge all international courts to look first at the real legal facts and to make statements only on legal grounds. The Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Republic of Artsakh issued a statement in connection with the remarks of Charles Michel on the results of the trilateral meeting held in Brussels on May 14. In particular, the statement reads as follows. On May 14, Charles Michel, President of the Council of Europe, made statements to the press on the results of trilateral meeting with Prime Minister of the Republic of Armenia Nikol Pashinyan and President of Azerbaijan Ilham Aliyev. Both the general content of the statement and its individual provisions show that the European Union leadership continues to disregard the illegitimate rights and interests of the people of Artsakh. This is evidenced by the fact that the statement does not mention the blockade of the Berzor Corridor for more than five months, the illegal establishment of an Azerbaijani checkpoint and the de facto encirclement of Artsakh by 120,000 people and all the humanitarian problems arising from this. This fact shows that the President of the Council of Europe is not preventing Azerbaijan but encouraging it to use the the suffering of the people of Artsakh as a political tool. Let us recall that in 1991, the people of Artsakh, in full compliance with the norms of international law and the domestic legislation in force at that time, exercised their inalienable right to self-determination and created their state on the same basis as Azerbaijan and Soviet Armenia. Any representative of individual countries and international organizations has no right to direct the destiny of the people of Artsakh. In this regard, we reaffirm the determination of the people and authorities of the Republic of Artsakh to continue the struggle for their inalienable right in accordance with the norms and principles of international law. The government of Western Armenia condemns the de facto genocide policy of the Baku authorities against the people of Artsakh and demands effective cooperation from international courts to prevent conflicts and bloodshed. The people of Artsakh are indigenous, self-determining in accordance with all international norms and have the right to live freely and safely in in their own country. The U.S. State Department published the 2022 Religious Freedom Report of the U.S. Commission on International Religious Freedom. In particular, Azerbaijan is included in the list of countries under special control. The report mentions the destruction of Armenian spiritual heritage by the Baku authorities in the Artsakh territories that came under Baku's control. International bodies and other organizations continue to question the Azerbaijani government's willingness to protect and preserve the religious and cultural heritage in Artsakh and the surrounding territories under Azerbaijani control. In February, then Minister of Culture Anar Kerimov announced the creation of a working group to remove fake Armenian apostolic inscriptions from churches. Apparently, after international outrage, the government abandoned the plan and in March the European Parliament condemned Azerbaijani policy of destruction and denial of Armenian cultural heritage in any around Nagorno-Karabakh. The U.S. Commission on International Religious Freedom recommends that the U.S. government provide funding to the U.S. Agency for International Development and the U.S. Embassy in Baku for the restoration and preservation of places of worship and other religious or cultural sites in and around Artsakh. As Armen Press learns from the message of the Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Republic of Armenia referring to the activities of UNESCO in emergency and war situations, the permanent representative of the Republic of Armenia recalled the aggression unleashed by the armed forces of Azerbaijan against the sovereign territory of Armenia on September 13, 1972. The created situation, in particular the damage suffered by the educational system in the affected regions, and presented the steps taken to overcome the situation. In his speech, the permanent representative of the 
the Republic of Armenia also expressed concern about the threats to the Armenian cultural heritage in the territories controlled by Azerbaijan, particularly in Shushi and Hadrut regions. He emphasized that the numerous cases of destruction, vandalism, and appropriation of the Armenian cultural heritage since 2020 are an eloquent proof of the goal of eradication of any Armenian cultural traces. In this context, Ambassador Ter Stepanyan confirmed the wish to urgently send a UNESCO mission to Artsakh and adjacent territories. Now the musical part, the Armenian folk song. <laughs> 